that I will be going over is called a histogram. And some of you may have seen this before. Uh, I don't know if any, uh, if I have any dual enrollments, but you will see this on like an ACT or SAT. And the histogram is um, similar to a bar graph, but we don't call it a bar graph. It is a graph with bars. Um, the bars have equal length or equal width, not equal length, equal width. Um, the vertical scale represents frequencies and the horizontal scale um, we can either use class midpoints or class boundaries. So it doesn't technically uh, matter um, sometimes I'll tell you which ones you use on my math lab. They'll probably already have it set. You just compare. Um, okay. <laughs> so <clears throat> when I'm doing a histogram, I'm doing a graph, a visualization of a, of a frequency table. So I hope you remember what a frequency table is. So I'm going to use this one. I think this was the one that we did or I've been doing or using. Um, and I, I hope you remember that like from a fre frequency table, if I have classes like this that have a range of numbers, I can't necessarily um, determine. So I know that two of the data values from the data set are in this range, but I don't know what those data values are. I can't recreate the data set from a frequency table. I know 13 of the data values are in this range. I know 10 of them are in this range, but I don't exactly know what the values are. So I need to be able to represent all, I think it was 31, right? The sum of this was 31. All 31, double check me, all 31 um, data values, if I want to graph them. So <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to create a histogram. And let me get uh, nice straight lines. So I have, usually I'm in just quadrant one. So I'm just going to do quadrant one here. All right. And this can go and this can go. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, can I fit this here? Oh, I hate when I do this, but it happens sometimes. The class midpoints. I'm going to use the class midpoints to graph my first histogram. And then the next graph that I do, I'll use the class boundaries to show you the difference. So let me pull out my little calculator. Let's see if we remember how to find the class midpoints. So I want to find them for each class. How many classes do I have? Hmm. I have five classes. Um, let's find the class midpoint of the first class. So I'm taking basically the average, I'm taking the middle of these two values, so I add them together, 28 plus 65, and then divide by 2, and the first class midpoint is 46.5. 46.5. Um, I don't know if we remember the class width, but I could continue to do 66 plus 103, and then divided by two to find this class midpoint, 84.5. And then the next one I could do 104 plus 141, 245, oh, divided by two, 122.5. And I don't know if you um, recognize, 122.5 minus 84.5 is 38. Um, 84.5 minus 46.5 is 38. So my class width is 38. So what I'm going to do is just take this 122.5 and add 38 to it to get the next class midpoint, 160.5. And then I'm going to go ahead and take another 38, add it to that to find the next class midpoint, 198.5. So there's a couple different ways that I could find those class midpoints, right? I'm going to take them and put them on this uh, graph. Okay, so this is going to be a histogram of this frequency table, which represents the number of calls of whatever it was. I'm going to put the class midpoints on the horizontal scale. So 46.5, um, 84.5, 122.5, 84.5. That's a four, just in case. 122.5, trying to make them equidistant. 160, 198. 160.5 and 198.5. 
to say 84. That's going to bother me. So <clears throat> if you want, you could do like these squiggly lines. I don't know if you remember what those means, but that mean, but that, you know, this starts at zero and obviously I'm jumping to 46.5 and every tick is 38. So obviously this first tick mark is not equivalent to these. So sometimes you do that squiggly line that indicates that you're kind of jumping to a specific location on the graph. I don't, you know, um, and so these are the class midpoints which represent the calls, right? Number of calls. So I'm just labeling my graph, which is what I should do. And then my height represents the frequency. And so, you know, in terms of the height, I need to at least have a two and at most have a 13. So, I, you know, I could scale it however I want. Um, maybe I'll count by twos. Two, four, six, eight, that's an eight, nine, 10, that's an eight, 12, 14, and I really could stop there because I only need to go up to 13. So here, I'm going to create this histogram for this table. So my first um, tick here is the midpoint of the first class. So this bar that I'm going to draw is going to represent the first class, and it's represented by that class midpoint. So the first class has a frequency of 2. So I'm going to draw a bar that starts a little bit to the left of that midpoint or that tick, tick bar and um, ends in between the first tick bar and the second because I want to have this bar that I create with this little 46.5 in the middle because it's the midpoint of the first class and it's going to go up until it reaches a height of two and you know usually I ask my students to label that but you guys are doing it on my math lab so it's pretty much just comparing a frequency table to a histogram so this is my first class has a frequency of 2. My second class has a midpoint of 84.5 and a frequency of 13. So I don't want to go all the way to 84.5, sorry. I wanted to go in the middle. I went too far. I used the wrong mark. Right? I want the 46.5 to be in the middle. There we go. That makes more sense. In the middle of my first class because it's the midpoint. So my next bar is going to have 84.5 in the middle. I'm trying to make them equally you know, equal in width, but I'm not perfect. I'm going up, I'm going to make a straight line, up <laughs> to 13, between 12 and 14, up to 13, between 12 and 14. And I like to mark my um, histogram. So technically, they're supposed to have the same width. Obviously, I'm not perfect because I'm doing it by hand. But why do they need to have the same width? Because the width of these bars represents the class width and that should stay consistent with a frequency table. So I'm going to keep going. My next um, height will go up to 10. So I'm starting here and I'm ending here. Technically they're supposed to be straight lines but I'm not perfect. And then my next one is going to be 3 and 3. So 3 and 3. And notice that there are no gaps between each of these bars because um, you know, where this one ends here, this one's beginning. We don't have any gaps between because we're representing the total um, frequency table, all the classes. And this is my histogram for this particular frequency table. Um, if you ever see me do ND question mark, that means I'm asking you, is this distribution normally distributed you know it does it follow a normal distribution kind of pattern does it have that symmetric bell-shaped curve you know um, and I would say and I'll just draw this temporarily you know if you were to draw a curve that follows this it kind of goes down here up and then it almost looks like it kind of withers away this way so what does that look like to you it looks like a long right tail so it kind of looks a bit skewed to me skewed to the right which means that it's not normally distributed but that's okay for now I just wanted to know is it or is it not so um, this is what we call a histogram any questions about a histogram let me uh